Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living commentary boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we run around making out with the stakeout as we're trying to get our headshots for that dark matter camo. <laughs> how, how did my white boy impression sound? I, I think it could be a little bit better. I always see comments from people like, your, your intro sounds like it's inspired by White Boy 7th Street, like you sound just like him. I'm like, that's the point. <laughs> But, ladies and gentlemen, really do appreciate all the love and support. Uh, I was looking at Google Trends uh, probably about 10 minutes before I started filming this video, trying to get ideas for what I wanted to talk about because the format's dead. People are talking about banlist predictions. I already talked about that a couple of months ago, maybe like month, month and a half. We were ahead of the curve with that because this format is really just dead, for lack of a better term. Um, so, I, I wanted to kind of take a step back from Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and look at content creation and things that we could talk about. And as the title uh, says, I want to talk about the 25th anniversary uh, of Yu-Gi-Oh! And really, it feels like the 30th anniversary because it feels like that they've celebrated it for years upon years upon years at this point. But if you don't know, the 25th anniversary of Yu-Gi-Oh! is finally coming to an end. We get the Quarter Century Stampede, uh, which is going to be the last like rarity collection bonanza type of set that will have QCRs in it. And then once we get Alliance Insight, which is our uh, next, next core set, because we get Supreme Darkness, that's the next one. Then the one after that is Alliance Insight. I know that that's a lot to take in, and it's crazy that we already know that far out, but we usually know about two core sets in advance, what we're going to be getting and things like that. So Alliance Insight, the next core set after Supreme Darkness, will be the last uh, set, will be the last uh, chance to get quarter century secret rare cards before it goes away forever. So we're finally hitting that point where we're going to have a set amount of QCRs that the community will want to collect, um, ranging from not that expensive to uh, basically one of a kind to get like in the Kaiba briefcase where in that 51 card, I think it was 51, 55 card uh, Kaiba deck, that quarter century secret rare blue eyes is currently sitting at $400 at the time of this recording. So there is good money to be made off of these QCRs and I'm sure that they're going to go up as years go by. But overall, how did the 25th anniversary of Yu-Gi-Oh go? Like... It, was it a good celebration? Was it bad? Did they overdo it? I feel like had the celebration literally just been like a year, year and a half, I feel like that the 25th anniversary would be much more special. There's other things that we still have to come down the pipeline, like the early days collection, which I am really, really excited for. I've already pre-ordered my copy for the Switch, because surprisingly it's only coming out on Switch and PC, which is crazy, but besides the point. Um, there are some other things in the works like that. But the problem with the anniversary overall was that Konami has had it go on almost until, like, what now, the 30th anniversary at this point? Like, it feels like it's been going on for almost, like, five years now. And I think that that really took a lot out of the uh, sales, no pun intended, but the, the uh, pirate ship sales uh, and the excitement of it all when it's like every set just had the same garbage really for lack of a better term like do people really want a copy of magician of bonds and unity as a qcr and the only difference between it and the other copies is a different colored background based upon the color of the course set that's not really what people want for a 25 year celebration like it, it should the card be competitively good not necessarily i mean it's one of those things that it basically has like a prize card effect where like if you've got 25 cards in your grave then it gains 2500 attack whatever like it, i don't think the 25th anniversary exclusive celebration s card should be something broken i'm not saying that but there's a lot more that Konami could have done overall with the 25th anniversary that I think that they just really dropped the ball on. I mean, for years, people have wanted, you know, more alt arts, um, full arts where, you know, the whole card is the artwork with the stats on it and whatever. You know, they could have done a lot of cool things like that for the 25th anniversary, and they just didn't. Um, a lot of the sets that... Uh, were strictly for quarter century celebrations, such as the um, 25th anniversary boxes, which 
are still fantastic investments if you're willing to drop the money on it. Like I was looking at some of the boxes like Metal Raiders and Pharaoh Servant and all that. And they're basically all fifty to sixty dollars a piece. Uh, Pharaoh Servant on the low end was like forty to forty-five, and now that's up to sixty. The only one that's gone up is uh, Legend of Blue Eyes twenty-fifth anniversary, uh, currently sitting at one forty to one fifty. So having one of each of those boxes and sitting on that, even if it's for another twenty-five years, you're gonna make good money off of that. Like that's an an amazing investment opportunity, and really anything that you invest into. With the QCRs, we knew it was going to be a limited time thing, but eventually all these QCRs are going to just go to the moon. Even the ones that were mass printed, like in the Megatons, Rarity Collection 1, 2, Stampede, Bonanza, all that, uh, those things are all going to be expensive. Um, even if they drop over time, like if they get banned or get limited, whatever the case may be, they're going to go back up over time because they are eventually going to become scarce. Um, and I think that collectors wise that's fine i mean it's a card game so obviously people are going to are going to get cards just to collect them especially like just the qcr rarity i mean i remember the number hunters and stuff back in the day people collecting all the numbers cards but again it comes back to the length of time that they spent doing this that it just became obnoxious and on top of that i think that A lot of this with the 25th anniversary left a bad taste in people's mouths because of the other issues that the game has been having for a few years now at this point. People want better prize support. We're not getting that. I just covered in a video a couple days ago, but speaking of which, that was recorded before Thanksgiving, so I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, But we just covered a video how a, a fucking core TCG regional is giving out a fucking $80 air fryer. I looked up the air fryer after I made the video. It's a Ninja air fryer that is like 80 bucks. And the reason why I'm saying it's 80 is because there's other models on their website that are the look like the same model, but they're more expensive. But you know damn well Konami's gonna go cheap on it. So it's like 80 bucks. Or if it's core TCG, they're probably not spending an arm and a leg on that air fryer. They probably got the $80 one. So... For an $80 air fryer, like you're going to go to a fucking regional to try and top eight, $80 doesn't even get you a mulch army, Perulia or Fualos. So like, uh, cool, you got an air fryer that 99% of the community doesn't want because they're all going to fast food. Like ain't nobody trying to eat healthy out of an air fryer. At least I'm assuming you can cook healthy food in an air fryer. I'm not a cook, but besides the point, what are some other things that they could have done to make it better? Well... Other than like the full arts and different kinds of alt arts and things, I think that they could have done much better with like the prize cards. Like why the prize cards weren't QCRs is beyond me. Like even if you did the Another Verse Monsters, why are the Another Verse Monsters not QCRs? Why are they Ultras and Supers and stuff? Like if you're celebrating the 25th anniversary, you would think that prize cards would be 25th anniversaries Uh, so i don't know man i feel like overall the 25th anniversary it's obviously meant to be a celebration of like the nostalgia and stuff so having like a lot of the nostalgia-esque cards like rescue rabbit and, and old things like that being reprinted in qcr is cool but if you're not really into the nostalgia, then it didn't really do you anything. That's why Rarity Collection 2 got a lot of hate compared to Rarity Collection 1. Because Rarity Collection 2 is basically just filled with a bunch of nostalgia cards. Which isn't the biggest deal in the world because basically you get Rarity Collection 1 and 2. You get the best of both worlds. Where if you want the competitive cards in QCR Rarity, you're going to go for Rarity Collection 1. And the Rarity Collection 2 is the nostalgia, all that fun stuff. But... With how long it lasted, I I, I think that what they should have done is that they do one giant set for QCR stuff. And they can do different promotional um, sets like the 25th anniversary reprint boxes and retro pack and all that and the rarity collections. But even with the rarity collections, I think they should have done one giant rarity collection style set where like it's it's even if they made it like a thousand card set. Where, like, you got, say, 10 cards per pack. And, like, a bunch of those could be QCRs. Like, imagine if they did Bonanza, Stampede, and Rarity Collection 1 and 2 all into one set. 
but you got like whatever it would be like 10 to 20 cards per pack and you were guaranteed certain rarities and things i think that that would have been better for a 25th anniversary celebration or even what if they made it like and this is i'm sure that this is kind of crazy for like pull rate wise but what if for the 25th anniversary they made like a rarity collection style set but it was like a 2500 card pool you know 25 for the 25th anniversary and like that was the big set and then they did other like one-off things like the kaiba briefcase um the megatons maybe you throw in some qcrs there um but you have this like one big 25th anniversary set 2500 card pool to celebrate it obviously they want to you know get as much money as they can out of it and milk uh the player base for as much as they can but i think with how long they had it going just goes to show that they were just so money hungry for it it's going to be interesting to see if they do anything at all for the 30th anniversary and see if they make that last for 10 years into the 40th anniversary i don't know man but i i think it was a missed opportunity too, especially for like a lot of nostalgia things and i'll end the video at this you know, we still don't have Valen's armor cards. We don't have Darts or Ikalko's cards. We don't have a lot of things from the anime that a lot of people want, and they could have used the 25th anniversary as a platform to give us those things. Hell, make the Egyptian god cards actually playable for the 25th anniversary. Like, they're always touting Blue Eyes and Dark Magician as, like, the headliners. What about the Egyptian gods? Like, a lot of people like the egyptian gods and they want those things to be playable and sure you could say oh well avery you can make a casual deck for it i want to see these things be at least rogue level like meta comp meta uh viable if i could speak tonight like doesn't have to be tier zero don't have to be tier one just make it meta viable at least make it a rogue deck so guys let me know what you think overall about the 25th anniversary now that it's going to be wrapped up in uh 2025 post alliance insight probably in about another six seven months from now but guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video